There is a recent paper that I am going to link in the show notes. They were looking at beta alanine supplementation, uh, 6.4 grams per day. The cumulative dose uh, should have been adequate to achieve an ergogenic effect, um, you know, in theory. Um, but unfortunately, you know, within this program, the, the part participants were doing about 12 reps per set, uh, three sets per exercise, going to, you know, concentric failure and resting a minute between sets, resting two minutes between exercises. Beta alanine in this particular study really just didn't do much at all in terms of facilitating hypertrophy or facilitating strength gains. I think it was eight, maybe 10 weeks or so in duration. Mm -hmm. uh, so the dose per day was high enough. The duration was long enough. The cumulative dose should have been sufficient for beta alanine to do what it's supposed to do. And in this case, uh, you know, beta alanine just really didn't do much for this program. Now it, it, it was an eight week study, eight week study. Yeah. yeah that's what I thought. Um, so the, uh, the, the uh, takeaway here is based on this research, based on this particular study, not very promising for the people who like to use beta alanine within the context of a pretty standard, pretty typical hypertrophy program. Um, now, nine or 10 people per group, one study, of course, we don't want to get too carried away and, and kind of put the nail in the coffin of beta alanine. Um, but there's not really a ton of research suggesting that beta alanine directly is efficacious within this type of training program. Mm -hmm. And here is one piece of evidence that chips away at some of our confidence in that conclusion. And so for me going into this study, um, my suspicion was that if you were doing sets of 12, going to failure, only one minute of rest between sets, I would have anticipated a small benefit from beta alanine. And when I say small, when you're talking about standardized effect size categories, what I really mean is trivial, but for a lot of people, trivial matters uh, in terms of, you know, if it's non-zero reliably, we'll take it in a yep. lot of cases. Yep. So I was expecting probably a trivial effect of beta alanine in this context. Uh, that's not what was observed. And we're gonna need some more research to really dig into this to figure out exactly how specialized beta alanine is for lifters. Uh, you know, we know for certain, um, well, that's about as, as bold a statement as I'd ever make. So there is a, a very large body of evidence suggesting that beta alanine is effective when you are doing, you know, truly purely anaerobic glycolytic sprint type exercise. When you're, if you're doing exhaustive bouts of exercise that are two minutes in duration and you're doing several of them, like beta alanine, ought to help in that scenario. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that. But when it comes to lifting applications, this study, uh, like I said, chips away at our confidence that it has a lot of utility in a typical hypertrophy program with uh, that kind of standard hypertrophy rep range and the standard one or two minutes of rest between sets. Uh, I still believe, uh, based on mostly mechanistic uh, theory, that beta alanine probably has applications when it comes to things like CrossFit, uh, other forms of circuit type training, strongman medleys, possibly, uh, depending on exactly how the medleys put together. Uh, so I, I, I'm not ready to say that beta alanine is useless for hypertrophy or for the typical hypertrophy program, but um, we, we don't yet have a definitive line where we say, these are the programming uh, characteristics that make use of beta alanine, and these are the programming characteristics at which it becomes useless. We don't really know where that line is, and we don't know which side of the line uh, typical hypertrophy programming falls on. Mm -hmm. So it's an area where we're going to need some more research. And like I said, if you're into hypertrophy-focused training and uh, you've been using beta alanine because uh, you know you like me, anticipated that it would be at least somewhat helpful in these applications. Uh, like I said, this could be good news or bad news. Uh, it could be good news because you say, oh, great, I don't have to spend money on it anymore. And I don't have to, you know, take the two grams like, you know, three or four times throughout the day, depending on how you split it up. So, you know, beta alanine is kind of a pain to dose several times throughout the day to avoid all the tingling. Um, so you might look at this as a good thing, or you might look at it as a bad thing because you say, hey, I I kind of have that sunk cost where I've been using beta alanine for so long and paying for it. I was hoping it was doing something for me. Maybe it's not. Um, 
Again, I want to reiterate, we're talking about small sample research. We're talking about one finding. We shouldn't get too carried away. Um, but I do think there's a, a perspective uh, that's very common, which is that beta alanine is a slam dunk for hypertrophy type training. And I don't think we're quite ready to make that type of conclusion yet.